To learn how to operate VMIX Replay, it's important that we know how it works. It works by simultaneously recording up to eight inputs on a unified timeline as streamable video files on your local storage for playback and clipping purposes. What? So basically, you can take up to eight cameras, feed those into VMIX Replay, VMIX Replay then records those cameras that you fed into it, which means it records a streamable video file for each camera. Streamable in this context means you can freely jump into any part of that video file and start playing through it, even while it's still being recorded. And because these files are all being recorded at the same time together, they share a timeline. Video editors are a very common example of videos sharing a timeline together. So imagine we stack eight videos on top of each other in one of those programs. You could scrub forward and backward along the timeline and then look at any one of those recordings at that point on the timeline and play through it. When something happens that's interesting on one of your camera recordings, you can create a clip, which conceptually is a specific section of the timeline viewed from a specific camera. To illustrate this, let's pick a particular section of the timeline by marking an endpoint and an outpoint. Then we need to select one of the recordings. I'll pick this one. The result is a clip, and this, in essence, is what we're going to be doing with vMix Replay. So the primary purposes of vMix Replay then are to record cameras, clip action from those recordings, and play back those clips. I've created a bundle of project files that are meant to be used to follow along and learn hands-on with this video series. Please go to the link in the description to download them. For the first video in the series, we'll only be using the vMix bundle. We'll cover the other files in later videos. You will also need access to vMix version 26 in order to use the bundle. If you don't have a key already, you can acquire a trial version at vMix.com by clicking on the download free trial button, and then downloading for Windows. After you've installed and activated vMix, you can open up the vMix zip bundle that I provided. Uncheck replay and replay preview because we'll be creating those from scratch, and then click open. Once the project bundle loads, you should see what you're looking at right here. It's the main window of vMix with a couple videos of Rocket League gameplay that are playing roughly in sync with each other. That is, the time on the clock should be about the same. I won't be covering much of the overall basics of vMix itself in these videos, but you should at least know a couple of things. The big upper right window is called the output. It's where you'll send your replay footage so that the directors can use it in the show. The big upper left window is called your preview, and that's where you can stage something before bringing it into your output. This bottom area is where your inputs go. If you're coming from OBS, these are called sources there. In case you forgot to uncheck the replay and replay preview boxes when you loaded the project, uh, you will see those inputs down here. Just click close on replay A and that should do the trick. To add a replay input from scratch, we click on add input in the bottom left. This opens a window to let us choose the type of input we're adding. We're selecting instant replay. You'll need to choose a storage location where vMix can store the recordings of your cameras for replay purposes. Ideally, use an SSD and one that is separate from your drive with Windows installed. If that's not possible, make sure you check this checkbox to automatically delete prior video when disk space is low. For recording format, we're using 1280x720, NTSC 5994P, and LQ quality. On your actual shows, you'll probably be working with 1920 by 1080. I just made the footage in this template 720p in order to keep things lightweight and shareable. For cameras, we're selecting output 3 for camera 1 and output 4 for camera 2. These outputs are something I configured in the project bundle, and you don't really need to worry about the how or the why right now. Make sure playback audio source is set to follow, and then press OK. This now creates the Replay A and Replay B inputs. 
It also adds this little tab on the far right that reads Instant Replay. Go ahead and click this to access the replay controller. The replay controller is where you'll perform most of your work as the replay operator. You can access it, like you just saw, by clicking Instant Replay in the main vMix window. Then I recommend you click the pin button here to undock it and full screen it. When it opens, monitors should be enabled, but if they're not, this button will be gray and it's okay. You just click it to enable the monitors. Next, click record here in the bottom left to begin recording. Once you do, you'll see this information displayed in red next to the record button, including how much record time is remaining. The remaining caps out at 24 hours and I have a lot of storage, so that's what it shows. If you have a small number here, just be aware of it and keep an eye on it. And consider checking that option we saw to automatically delete prior video when disk space is low. Now that we're recording, you see things happening in your monitors. In the upper right are your inputs. Depending on your settings and whether the live button is active or not, you'll either see the live feeds of these cameras or you'll see the recordings of these cameras wherever you are on the replay timeline. There are uses for both of these and we'll cover that in a future video. In the upper left are your outputs. These are what you use to play back footage that you've recorded or clipped. On the main vMix window, these are the replay A and replay B inputs. The number next to each replay output indicates which camera is currently in it. A1 means replay A is showing camera 1. B1 means replay B is also showing camera 1. It'd be better for us to switch replay B to camera 2 so that we can see both cameras at the same time. We can do this by clicking on the 2 next to B here. The AB button lit in green means that replay A and replay B are linked together. So wherever you go on the timeline, playing, pausing, etc., you'll see it happen in both replay A and replay B simultaneously. Clicking A or B by comparison would take control of just replay A or just replay B. For the purpose of this video, please leave it on AB as you see here. With camera 1 in replay A, camera 2 in replay B, and A and B linked together, we're ready to start exploring the timeline. On the bottom of the replay controller, below the record button, is your replay timeline. There's a playhead on this timeline to show you where you are, and you can click and drag this playhead to scrub forward or backward through the entire timeline pretty quickly, just like in video editing software. The play button begins playing on the timeline from wherever your playhead is. And then, once it's playing, you can also click it again to pause. The button with the left arrow is the toggle to reverse the playback direction, which in other words just means everything will play in reverse if you click this. You see cars driving forward right now, I click it, now they're driving backwards. I'll pause and untoggle that now. Way over on the right edge of the timeline is the jump to most recently recorded frame button, also known as jump to live. Like it says on the label, if you click this, your playhead will go to the very far right of the timeline, which is the most future moment you can get to, the most recently recorded moment. And while we're in the neighborhood, there are these buttons here to control the overall playback speed of the replay controller. It's currently at 100, but you can set it down to 75, 50, 33, or 25 as preset values. And you can also access more values by using the slider next to them. And now it's time for the main event, clipping. There are two ways to clip in vMix Replay, from the timeline and from live. Clipping from the timeline is just like we talked about earlier with the video editor analogy. To do so, you'll select an endpoint and an outpoint on the replay timeline. Clipping from live means your outpoint will always be the end of your timeline when you press the button. 
In other words, your out point is live because it's whatever just happened on your cameras, the most recently recorded thing on your cameras that just happened. The end point when you clip from live is a set amount of time before that on the timeline. The options here are minus 5, minus 10, and minus 20, which respectively mean clipping the last 5 seconds from live, the last 10 seconds from live, and the last 20 seconds from live. We'll start with clipping from the timeline. In order to do so, we'll need to disable the live button. If it's gray, you're good. If it's red, just click it once like I did here. Then, we'll scrub to somewhere on the timeline to try to find a goal being scored. Scrubbing along, looking for some text that says a player has scored. Waiting, waiting, looking around. Scrubbing through, scrubbing through, looking for a goal. There it is, found one. Okay, so we're going to scrub back a bit to before this goal got scored. Right about here, and we'll mark our in. Then we'll play forward on the timeline to watch the goal happen. And when the goal happens, we'll click out to mark the out of the clip. Goal scored, mark out. Awesome, you just made a clip, congratulations. Next, we'll make a clip from live. To do so, please go ahead and re-enable the live button by clicking on it. This time, we're looking at our live feeds of our cameras in the upper right monitors. So keep an eye on those, and when you see a goal get scored, we're going to press the minus 10 button to clip the 10 seconds that led up to it. We're waiting, we're waiting. There's a goal, click minus 10 now. Awesome. Now we have two clips, one that we made by marking in and out on the timeline, and the other that we made by marking from live. Let's take a look at the information displayed in our list of clips. The far left value is the clip ID. In is the timestamp for the in point of the clip. Out is the timestamp for the out point. Duration is the clip length, which is the difference between those two timestamps. Speed is the playback speed for that clip when you play it out. By default, a clip will use whatever speed the replay controller is set to. It's that setting in the bottom right. To set up speed for a clip, select it, click on its speed value, and while holding click, drag left and right to adjust the speed. You can also click and drag on the in and out timestamps for clips, but as you can see, this Clicking and dragging is fairly imprecise, and I would go so far as to say, jank. Don't worry, there are better ways to set all of these things. We're just learning how to use the replay controller with mouse and keyboard for this first video. The last columns for each clip are checkboxes for each camera. These determine which camera angle you're using when you play out the clip. In theory, you can check multiple cameras and it'll play the clip from each angle back to back. In practice, we generally don't do this. Instead, we pick one. So if you check the second camera, you'll uncheck the first. If you check the first camera, you'll uncheck the second. This way, we're just playing each clip from one camera angle. Let's go ahead and set the first clip to camera two and we'll leave the second clip on camera one. Now that we have some clips, let's play them out. The first step to playing out clips is selecting them. To select one clip, you just click it. To select multiple, you have a few options. Just like in Windows, you can click and drag to select multiple. You can click and control click to add one at a time to your selection, or you can click and shift click to select all between. The selection is called a package. Once you've selected clips, you'll see some information displayed in the replay output. Most importantly, 
you'll see how many clips are selected and you'll see dur short for duration which tells you the total length of the clips you selected directors will commonly ask for this and call it trt short for total running time or they'll just ask how much you got how much you got how much you got either way if they ask, this is the number they're looking for. This set of buttons down here is used for playing out clips. The first button is Auto Play Last Replay Event. We're not going to be using it here. Next to that is the Play Events button, which will be your primary way of playing out clips. By default, clicking this will play out the selected clips in order from top to bottom. There are additional options you can access by clicking on the little arrow on the right edge of the button. Namely, play all, which will let you play all clips in your current bin without having to select them first. This is handy when you start building a longer list. Next to play events are the previous and next buttons, which let you skip forward and backwards through your clips as you play them out. Loop is a toggle, which lets you loop through your list continuously. We're not going to be using it right now, but the music button is a fun little tool if you want to explore it on your own. Before we select and play events with these clips selected, let's describe what we expect to happen. The top clip should play at 76% speed. You know what? That's not cool enough. Let's do something lower, like dramatic. 56? No, lower. 31, yeah. Oh yeah, 31% speed. That's just grand. Let's do that. So the first clip will play at 31% speed from camera two. Then the second clip will play, uh, we should define its speed. Let's say, let's put it at 100 so it plays at full speed. So the second clip will play at full speed from camera one. So first clip, 31% camera two. Second clip, 100% camera one great so let's select them go to click play events and let it rip okay the information the replay output has turned green duration has turned into rem short for remaining time and it's starting to count down to zero the first clip is indeed playing in slow motion from camera two Now, the second clip is playing from camera one at 100%. Four, three, two, one, out. And that's it. Your package is complete. Congratulations, you just played out your first replay package. Now that you've created clips, I'm going to really quickly mention here the export clips button, which you can use to export clips as individual video files. You'll commonly do this after shows in order to send your clips to the client or video editor or someone else on the project. I recommend you take some time now to practice clipping and playback, and I'll leave you with this challenge. I want you to click on bin number two here to start fresh, and then I want you to clip three new goals into a new package and then play it out. I want you to make at least one of these clips by using in out marking on your timeline and make at least one of them by marking from live. Don't forget about the live button and which one needs to be on, which one needs it to be off. In the next video, I'll be covering how to use BitFocus Companion and Stream Decks to perform all of this clipping and playback in VMix Replay in a much faster, easier way. So I guess I'd better get started on that video and when I'm done, I'll see you there.